Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at how we could increase water supply across the globe. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. In order to increase water security around the globe, we need to find new sources or develop better ways of moving water from areas of surplus to areas of deficit. There are numerous solutions to the issue of water supply. We're going to have a look at a few of them in this video. The first strategy to increase water supply is dams and reservoirs. Dams block rivers and control the flow of water, enabling a store of water to build up behind it in a reservoir. Rainfall is collected and stored when precipitation levels are high and released gradually during drier periods. There are pros and cons to increasing water supply using dams and reservoirs. Firstly, the water can be transported and used for irrigation. Dams can be huge in scale, which means that they are able to support lots and lots of people. However, they are really controversial as they cost a lot of money, they starve the river downstream of water and they displace people upstream. This happened with the Three Gorges Dam in China, which is pictured on the screen. It's the world's biggest dam and took 15 years to construct, costing $37 billion, which is around about £27 billion in the UK, and it displaced 1.3 million people. On the other hand, they can be very small, for example, cement dams, which are just a few metres high. Although these are effective, they do have a limited impact overall on the global water security. And the reservoirs behind dams can lose a lot of water through evaporation. Our second strategy to increase water supply is water transfer schemes. These are schemes that take water from areas of surplus to areas of deficit through a network of canals and pipelines. They are on a much larger scale than diversion and storage projects. An example of a large-scale water transfer scheme is China's South-North Water Transfer Scheme, which moves huge amounts of water from the humid south to the arid north. This region has experienced rapid population growth and is home to 200 million people. It is also seeing significant economic development, meaning that there is a demand for irrigation for farming and for water for thirsty manufacturing industries. We've got a video in this playlist that looks at this project in more detail. Another example is the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, which transfers water from Lesotho to South Africa. Lesotho is an LIC and is landlocked. In fact, it is entirely surrounded by South Africa. It also has a water surplus because it's mountainous with a high level of precipitation and a low population total whereas South Africa has a large population with uneven rainfall, particularly in the south and west. The Lesotho's Highland Water Project involves the construction of dams, such as the Katsi Dam pictured on screen, reservoirs and pipelines, and other infrastructure needed to support water transfer, including roads and bridges. There is also a specific video about this project in the playlist. There are pros and cons of using water transfer schemes. The biggest benefit is that they decrease water insecurities in certain areas and they can also create numerous economic benefits through irrigation but also construction. However, they are complicated and they are costly because they involve a complex system of canals and pipelines to take, to take water from one river basin to another. They can lead to lots of wastage in the area receiving water and in the area giving water, there are environmental impacts such as declining fish stocks and increased pollution. The last strategy that we're going to discuss in this video is desalinization. This is a process of removing salt from seawater to turn it into fresh water for drinking and for irrigation. Many countries in the Middle East have desalinization plants and more recently the USA, Japan and Spain have all embraced this solution to increase their water security. Well, how does it work? Well, it starts off with seawater intake, where seawater is slowly drawn in from the ocean. A protective grill means that the marine life cannot swim into the structure. Stage two is infiltration. Pre-treatment filters remove solids such as sand and cement. It then goes through reverse osmosis, where filtered seawater is pushed through ultra-fine membranes under high pressure. Fresh water will pass through, leaving seawater concentrate behind. 
It then goes through the process of mineralisation, where desalinated water has minerals added to meet government drinking water guidelines and health requirements. We then have storage, where drinking water is stored before it is distributed into regional water networks. And then finally, we have the water outlet. Concentrated seawater is returned to the ocean through diffusers, which then is diluted by ocean currents. You can see the process on the screen. So let's have a quick think about the pros and cons of desalinisation. Well, once again, it increases the amount of water available and increases water security. But it is very expensive, both the process and the transportation of the desalinated water to areas inland. So it's only suitable for HICs. Therefore, its impact with increasing global water security has been quite limited. However, there are lots of environmental issues, including dumping waste salt back into the sea. It also requires a lot of energy to complete the process, which means it has a large carbon footprint. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on increasing water supply. Thank you for watching.